to the eternally curious, unapologetically superstitious Midnight Society Rejects. Stormy Willow welcomes you. We're the eccentric coots, storytellers, explorers, stablers, practitioners, and paranormal pupils who examine the what's ifs, the what's thats, and WTFs of this dimension and beyond. Welcome to the Stormy Willow podcast. We are a paranormal podcast. I am your host, Adele, along with my sister, Sarah. Hey, guys. Welcome. I'm super excited. Uh, This is our our first uh, paranormal um, story, and we're so excited to launch it on Indigenous People Day. So uh, I'm really excited about it. I know you're going to tell them or tell me as well all about it, but um, just wanted to kind of give that shout out to kind of why we picked this topic and when we decided to release it. Yeah, yeah. Not not only will the, you be listening to this on um, Native American Heritage, Heritage Day, I think it's also what it's called, but yes. um, the topic is very not only near and dear to my heart, but near and dear to my location out mm-hmm. here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. Um, so if that's not hint enough for some of you enthusiasts out there that really love all the creatures and cryptids and weird things on the planet and beyond, we are going to be discussing skinwalkers today. Oh, that makes my skin crawl. Ah, yes. So, um, let's just crack right into it then. Um, Yeah, yeah, tell me, let's talk about skinwalkers. Let's let's do it. Let's talk about them. So I guess first off, what are skinwalkers? Do you have any preconceived ideas or any familiarity with what they are? I do. I do. Okay. And that pretty much someone or some entity, if you will, that takes on your skin. Yeah. And you yeah. all sorts of things and it looks like you, but it's not you. That is definitely one form of them. So Which is scary. It is pretty scary. Um, you know what? It's also a really good uh, scapegoat. So it's like when I act like a like a bad, I do something bad. I'm like, it wasn't me. It was obviously a skinwalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, and what you will learn from what I'm about to share with you is some of it really does remind me of like the witch trials. Like it's it's essentially a skinwalker is an evil witch, if you will. Um, but it's kind of interesting through the. Native American, in particular, those from the Four Corners regions here in the Southwest, um, and in particular, the ones who seem to believe in the skinwalkers the most are the Navajo. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting just through that lens instead of, you know, all of these, like, you know, English people and Quakers and stuff from Salem witch trials that you think of. So would you say, like, could a, this could a skinwalker be maybe like the first original witch of America if you think about it? Maybe because, I mean, they would have been around before. Yeah, I mean, I would think in America, like, yes. Over, so I'm thinking like for America, they possibly could be maybe our first so-called witch that was documented. Possibly, I, I mean, that's not a fact. That's just a Sarah. Throwing yeah. out an idea. <laughs> That's the whole point of the show. We'll uh, we'll kind of share some facts and then also share our speculations and just like our take on it. Um, but I think whenever I share a little bit of the background um, as far as the cultural lens, if you will, of the Navajo people um, of this region, you'll see that witchcraft is very much like a part of everyday life. So. Um, that's what I think is so anthropologically interesting about this because, well, anyway, we, we won't get into like that whole topic of like anthropology and history of Native American tribes, but it, you can't help that but have topic. to speak to that though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right off the bat, what are skinwalkers? Well, in Navajo, they are called Yinau oh. uh, which means with it, he goes on all fours which is already super spooky, right? So skinwalkers are always on all fours? No. Okay. Um. Not necessarily. (laughs) We'll get to that in a second. So 
what's interesting is they are human beings, at least from one theory. Um, there's an alternate theory that I'll share. Um, but I would say the most common thinking and notion of what a skinwalker is, is that they're human beings who have gained super, supernatural powers by breaking cultural taboos, essentially. And these are typically medicine men. So those who already have a connection to the spiritual powers, but then kind of turn dark. They're like more of your black gotcha. magic yeah. practitioners. They're like the fallen, they're like a, like a bad wizard. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so yes, skinwalkers are a part of the ancient Native American legends. So I do agree with you in that they are probably most likely in America, the oldest witches. Yeah. Uh, definitely before the, the you know, the, the United States was colonized. Right. Um, this is already a legend that was here. Right. Um, and like I said, the Navajo seem to be the biggest, I guess, influence or believers, if you will, of the Skinwalker, even though other tribes of the Southwest, including the Pueblo people, Apache and Hopi, they also believe in Skinwalkers, but there's maybe slight differences. The most popular that we're aware of and probably I've heard of is Navajo. Yeah. So, um, as I said, in Navajo culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch. So they have the ability to turn into animals and possess both animals and people. Oh, wow. So whenever I was doing my research on these guys, it's almost like they're a werewolf meets a vampire <laughs> meets a witch. Like, they're just That's all kind of bad. like, I feel like the holy grail of all, of all yeah. the things. Yeah, they're like Superman. <laughs> uh, like they, and like you said, like it's kind of interesting that they're typically already like medicine men. So like you said, like they already are quite um, skilled in spirits and whatnot. And then you add all those other layers on top, and you're dealing with a. If you're dealing with a skinwalker, you're dealing with something serious on your hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you really are, and actually. Um, a lot of the native people don't even think you should speak of skinwalkers because that will draw their attention to you. It's and really hard to find information about skinwalkers, isn't it? It really is. It really is. And um, if you are a believer in skinwalkers or you know Native American and your culture doesn't think you should talk about them, totally fine if you skip out on this episode. We understand, yes. <laughs> we totally yes. get it. Just tune in <laughs> next time on a different topic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for people to not even speak of them, it just makes you feel like, you yeah. know, like, oh. Which kind of ties into that, like, demon aspect as well, I think. It makes me think of, like, Zozo, uh -huh. um, which will definitely be another topic that's one of my other favorite ones. The, top, the topics I feel like on this podcast are endless. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So it's like, even thinking about it or speaking of it kind of conjures it. <laughs> right, exactly. So yeah, I feel like the skinwalker is the same way. I feel like I need, I feel like before I started this podcast, I should have gotten some salt or something and just like, just safety. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Yeah, as an aside, I mean, we just moved into a new house here in Albuquerque and uh, they, like, we had just gotten a new roof done, but, you know, they were completely finished working on our roof. But while I was researching this topic at night, I swear I kept hearing it, like, scratching on the roof. But there again, it's still a new house. But it was still kind of creepy because skinwalkers are known to do that. I don't know. And you're, like, in the area, so you're, like, all crap. <laughs> yes. I was I was kind of doing the taboos myself, if you will. I mean, this is kind of a, um, we're putting it out there for you guys. I mean, we're putting ourselves in danger. Yeah. <laughs> Bring the inspiration. Yeah, so, um, I mean, maybe I'm a skinwalker right now. Oh, that would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cat definitely is. Where is she? <laughs> well, that's the scary thing is that it can like be like you know it can like take over like your animal. And I think about Herman, which you guys will hear a lot of if you don't already um, know me personally. <laughs> but he's a little wild dog, and sometimes I'm like, maybe he, he's a, you know. Would, would you say you're possessed by a skinwalker, or would you say a skinwalker has like they're like, stealing? Skinwalker, like, do they literally like kill you and take over, or no. are they just like working? Like, how? What is how does that work? They're just like possessing your body? Yeah, so actually a few things there. They can take on your appearance, essentially like borrow your skin, if you will, and look like you. And then it's like, um, that's actually how they can really wreak havoc on their tribes is kind of making you trust them. 
And it's almost like, especially the outsiders, you don't want to talk about skinwalkers because you might be talking to a skinwalker. Oh, man. I mean, let's just get political right away. I mean, as if, you know, Native Americans don't already have, and rightfully so, so much distrust. You know, I mean, it's like I could see where it's like that's just one more level of, you know, this could be a skinwalker, like trying to still information and just take whatever little we Americans have given them so um, I could definitely yes lie, talking about them and that we will, we will definitely get into more on that with um, the US's influence in the 1800s oh, I'm so excited to hear about this okay I'll shut up now so back to the big thing all right so what are skinwalkers what do we know about them so as I mentioned they are grounded mainly in Navajo, but it seems that most of the tribes in the Southwest United States have some form of belief or version of them throughout their legends as well. Um, so they usually actually transform into a wolf, coyote, bear, or bird. A but bird they, even? What? Yeah, but they can transform into any animal. Um, okay. But so this is, it. yeah, this is one thing where I've heard like, two different stories essentially like one notion is that they can just transform but one other notion is they have to wear the animal's pelt so that's actually quite taboo according to like the navajo tradition you shouldn't wear um pelts or skins rather of animals who are predatory so you won't see them wearing wolf skins or coyote skins or fox skins they will only wear like sheepskins and it's only for certain rituals and special occasions. Generally, they will not wear animal skins. Like that's well, how taboo probably, this thing is. That's probably just a good rule to live by. Like let's let's not let's not wear anyone's skin, animal or human. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, just probably a good like, lesson in life. Hey, yes. <laughs> animals are friends, Where not are you food or fashion. <laughs> Or the skin you were born in, and let's just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what's interesting is I've noticed through my research is you kind of see this this whole thing of what is the social norm versus what is not. And it's like the skinwalker does and is everything that breaks that norm and is taboo. Um, so we'll get into thoughts about that later as well. But as I mentioned, what's interesting too about them usually transforming into wolves, coyotes, even bears. Um, those are native to this region. So they seem to be the local predatory. Gotcha. Creatures, local animals. But as whenever they are transformed into those animals, they get their power. Um, like whatever the animal does, like if it runs fast or the bear, it's really big and strong. Um, okay. The bird can fly. So you get those. So it's like by putting on that skin, like they get that power. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it almost sounded overly complicated the way some of them explained it, but I'm like, yeah, you turn into that animal. Wow. <laughs> so therefore get the abilities of that animal. Yeah, okay. Um, On ya. But what's kind of cool is it almost made me think of like an avatar or something. It's like, all right, if I know I'm going to be, I don't know, going up some cliffs or something, maybe I'll turn into a deer right. <laughs> you know, for my hooves or like, you can kind of yeah. transform as needed, so you get the the powers essentially that that are required for whatever it is you're doing. That's pretty intense. Um, so oh, yeah, so cool. that was the discrepancy there on if they have to be wearing the pelt or not. Yeah. <laughs> um, to me, it probably wouldn't matter because you're already a magical being. So why would it make a difference if you have the pelt or not? But I don't know. It makes it extra creepy. <laughs> Limit. And that's why I need the pelt. You know what I mean? Like maybe there's limits to their magic already. Yeah. Like that extra. Like um, I, I don't know, scale this mountain or fly away or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's also just the spooky factor, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty intense. I mean, some skinwalkers are even known to wear the animal's skulls and antlers oh. on their heads too. So. Um, I guess it's like each practitioner might be a little different or maybe be a more of a powerful practitioner than the other. Uh, uh. Um, so yes, they can also shift into any one. Um, as I mentioned, that kind of helps them win trust of people. So it's like, 
or I mean, I'm just thinking through if I were a skinwalker, it'd be kind of a good way to spy on people to see if they're talking about you. Yeah, and that's also one. Right? Because it's like, hey, you think Sarah's acting kind of strange, but you're actually Sarah asking about it. It's like, all right, they're on my hit list now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, all right, even more powers, though. These things are super powerful. It can also read your thoughts. <laughs> ah. Um, it can I'm control you with a skinwalker. <laughs> like, these things are just unstoppable. It can control your thoughts and actions by looking into your eyes. So Sounds like a very kind of fast one, two, three. Don't do it. It could be a skinwalker. Exactly. <laughs> Which is also funny. Later on, we'll get to how to identify a skinwalker. So you kind of shoot yourself oh, in your God. foot trying to do that. <laughs> um, they're very fast, and as I mentioned, adopt the powers of the animals in which they're transforming into. Um, it's also said in some references that they can control other creatures of the night as well. So, wolves, like coyotes, ah, they can control those things too. <laughs> There's just a stop in a skinwalker, I feel like. Uh, no, and some say that they can summon spirits of the dead and reanimate those corpses to do their bidding. So, essentially zombies. <laughs> I would like, really... I, I, whoa. Yes. Of all the things we should have been afraid of, like, I feel like Skinwalker is, like, number one on the list. Like, there's... I mean, what can't a Skinwalker do? Like, whew. Well, I would say fly, but it can turn into a bird. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's like, there's just no stopping these creatures. This is very scary to me. Yeah, th these are pretty bad, powerful things. Um, but now let's talk about where we think that they come from. There's a few different theories floating around out there. Um, so one idea is kind of what I think what you were touching on whenever you said fallen at the beginning of the show. Um, one idea is like more of a creation myth theory. And it links the creation myth um, to skinwalkers actually being Nagloshi, um, and these were helpers of the holy people um, back when they were first teaching humans of the blessing way, if you will. So they're trying to teach humans how to essentially be good, and these were messengers for those holy people. Um, but whenever they were supposed to leave the mortal mortal realm, some of them stayed behind, and this greedy desire corrupted their power given from them from the holy um people and uh it essentially made them into a demon or a fallen angel so would you i was about to say yeah so it, it almost sounds like the whole fallen angel theory that yeah. we hear a lot um okay so yeah so essentially some tribes i think this might be where you get into that slight differences across tribes um some believe that uh the nagloshi are demons, like those original skinwalkers, if you will. Okay. So they were never mortal. And that a skinwalker is different from that and that it was mortal. And it's it's a shaman who practices black magic and becomes a skinwalker. Gotcha. So there's just different theories on that. Yeah. And then in others, it's kind of like they're one and the same. Or so that's kind of like... I mean, two. still equally terrifying. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally, totally terrifying. Um, so one thing I think you have to consider, like I said, is really the cultural ones. So whenever you're talking about the Navajo world, like witchcraft is very important. Um, so it actually is part of their daily behaviors and patterns. You, you try to avoid it, prevent it, even cure it. And apparently there are as many words for its various forms um, in Navajo, as there are different types of snow among the Eskimo. So there's all sorts of different types of magic. It's very much part of the everyday life. So I just think keeping that in mind really makes this more real and terrifying if you are one of the indigenous people or, yeah. <laughs> or a tribal member. Wow. Um, so in Navajo thinking, all good things in life result from respect for the harmony of the universe. And this is called so it's essentially balance and beauty. Um, skinwalkers represent everything that is not bad. Gotcha. Um, so like I said, throughout kind of what you think about with skinwalkers is it's that taboo kind of perversion of nature versus 
the beautiful balance of nature. Makes sense. Um, so the Navajo believe there are places where um, the powers of both good and evil are present, and that those powers can be harnessed for either good or bad. Which I think is interesting, the idea of trying to harness evil for good. <laughs> I'd like to understand more about that. That's kind of like crossing that line a little bit, you know? It's either like you always consider something good or evil, but I feel like that's kind of like a gray area. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So I think that's where, really, that's why these medicine men are so important. So the medicine men harness the powers for good to heal, to aid, um, and, you know, for that beautiful balance. Right. But there are those who practice what is called the witchery way. Uh. And they harness these forces to cause harm and misfortune. And it is said that one can gain the power to become a skinwalker upon initiating, being initiated into the witchery way. Uh-oh. Yes. So there's... Uh -oh. A dark side. Oh my gosh, how to become one. Ah! Yes. So how do you become one? So we heard one theory is that maybe they were essentially fallen angels from the whole right. world. Right? They just kind of always were. But mortals can also become skinwalkers. I think this is the most popular theory, or at least one I'm most familiar with. Um, so there's a belief that skinwalkers are actually a member they're members of a secret society, if you will, evil shaman. And what's creepy about this, and there again, this is also what kind of makes me think of like the witch trials that we're more familiar with living on the East Coast. Right. From the East Coast. Um, is it's almost like a, a witch hunt and the idea that they're living among you, <laughs> like during the day, oh, but doing all like You're a skinwalker. You're a skinwalker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, so, okay question on that so you know well i can't wait like, i'm definitely gonna call, cover salem witch trials you know how I, uh, that's one of my oh, favorites yeah. but you know like say like i didn't like you and we were in a tribe or whatever and i just didn't like you and you weren't evil at all could i like tell the tribe or something that i think you're a skinwalker and then they would like murder you like they did with the did in salem or is it kind of a little different situation well, here? we'll get to that we'll get to okay. the witch purge okay <laughs> Because I'm like, that's pretty terrible. Um, I'm honestly, honestly, though, from what I like, researched, I, I just, I innately always think that indigenous people were better than that. Um. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's why that kind of surprised me. I, mean, I guess maybe it's, I'm, I'm being ignorant because I felt like it was kind of like us against indigenous people, you know? And I never really considered that they may had issues among their selves you know what i mean like i always was like yeah. Yeah, and i know that like, that's such an ignorant way to look at things that's what, and that's one reason why i'm really glad that we're doing these stories because um whether you're a believer in these things or you're not i think that human nature always remains the same somehow whether you're talking about tribes salem with trials whether you're talking about what's going on now it's all like just human behavior and it's just really interesting to me that I never really I always thought like Native Americans were all together and then like we tried to come and take over their land and there was never any disharmony among them which is not right probably an accurate depiction yeah I mean there's definitely always in group out group dynamics right you assume that groups that you're not a member of are more homogenous than right. they actually are so true and then that leads to stereotypes and racism yes it's very um, yeah yeah so of course i mean of course not everybody got along but from the research i've done there wasn't this i didn't notice this horrible thing of like false accusations as much as you hear about with like the salem witch trials yeah um it doesn't mean they didn't happen i just i didn't really see much research Find a lot of accounts of that yeah come forth but there again people don't really talk about this <laughs> so it's they really don't. hard to find any stories at all it's very hard. It really is. I mean, and I'm assuming if you did think someone was a skinwalker, you would maybe not want to mention it for fear of retaliation. Very um, true. I don't know. I mean, it's a good question, but I don't know. If, any listeners out there, if you know of any yeah. accusations of skinwalkers? Um, because that would be a pretty horrible thing to also be accused of if you weren't. I mean, you know, what if like, you really have like a mental disorder or something and something's really wrong with you and they're like, ah, oh, hell, 
you're a skinwalker. Well, and check not. this out. I think that would really piss you off to be accused of being a skinwalker because of what you have to do to become one. Okay, maybe so, I don't. Know. Maybe I need to know more about skinwalkers before I make that. So, like I said, some some people believe that skinwalkers are part of a secret group of essentially evil shaman. And uh, they live among the tribe by day, but at night they go off into the caves and do taboo rituals. Okay. And these rituals allegedly involve cannibalism, incest, yeah. um, desecrating graves, grave oh. robbing, necrophilia. Like, you have to do some pretty nasty stuff to one, be a member in the first place, but to get initiated yeah. in, you have to participate in this stuff too. That's pretty terrible. Okay, yeah. So to to be initiated, um, typically is what it sounds like you would have to do is murder a close relative, especially a sibling. Um, oh no, I, that rules me out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're both still here. Yeah, <laughs> so, I can never be a skinwalker. Um, there goes that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some other initiation practices, though, are also said to be necrophilia and grave robbing. Um, so, I mean, I guess you would have to be a grave robber to do the necrophilia part. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, um, it's pretty rough. So, like I said, I think if you did accuse somebody of being a skinwalker, you're essentially being like, you're a necrophiliac. <laughs> or murderer. Like, you're just all this horrible stuff that everything's happy in our culture. So... I don't know. I'd be offended if somebody accused me of that. <laughs> absolutely, yes. I was, yeah, absolutely. That's a pretty um, tall charge to be accused <laughs> of. So, but then if they had reason to like you, you know, that would be a whole different story. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so yeah, so that that is the most common thing I've heard about, or was most familiar with the skinwalkers, is that it's the initiation and you do like a ritual. Um, that's really taboo <laughs> to become a skinwalker Horrible. that involves doing some of these things. Um, but to also believe just, I don't know, just the taboo of like corpses and human remains, like even used in the ceremonies. It's all yeah. just kind of that, that, you know, disturbing the dead. It's kind of like the general consensus I, I got of like yeah. one of the taboos, like not letting the dead rest. Exactly. Um, and it's also believed that the teaching of this witchery way um, is passed down from the elders. So there's most likely an older man that is, let's say, the leader of the skinwalkers, if you will. And he passes on, like, what to do to become a skinwalker and keep these rituals going um, generation to generation. Ah. Uh, yeah. That's me. Um, also, women can be skinwalkers, um, but they're mostly men. Of course. I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave that right there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's scary because these are living among you, essentially. Um, so it's kind of like, well, okay, if I think I have a skinwalker on my hands before making false accusations, right? It's like, how do I know? Yeah, like, how um, do you know? So some say that when a skinwalker is in human form, they have animal-looking eyes. But when in animal form, they look more like human eyes. But that requires you to look into their eyes, oh. which means they could control your mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I was mentioning. Oh, like, do you <laughs> want to risk them having mind control over you <laughs> to see? Uh, oh. And um, generally what I, it sounded like to me is they also are just, there's something just a bit unnatural about them. In yeah. Animal form. Um, it kind of made me think of Men in Black. I know I'm dating myself, but whenever that one alien tries to put on like a human skin and it doesn't really fit. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of what I just kind of went, uh, went to white chicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where my mind went. <laughs> yeah, right? It's just like... It's just like, something it's kind of off. off. Yeah. So it's okay. like in the animal form, especially, like, that just doesn't seem like a wolf that's like the other wolves. Yeah, something's just a little off. Yeah. Something's just a little off about then it. And don't stare at its eyes. Do not. Yeah. I mean, you can try, but... Don't do it. Might be putting yourself at risk there. 
warned. <laughs> oh. You've been warned here for. Oh, what is that? That's a skinwalker. It looks like he looks like old Greg a little. Oh no! Actually, I think that I'll have to. And if you're not, if you're not watching, guys, I'll post these uh, pictures on social media. This one is pretty um, horrifying. I think it might actually be a shaman, but it popped up with skinwalkers. So I need to track down like what this actually is. Oh dear. Um, I'm definitely getting kind of an old Greg vibe at the top here. Old Greg. Sorry. See, also slightly just okay. unnatural, Sorry. right? Old Greg. Yes, yeah, everything about that is unnatural. The scaly oh, man fish yeah. with a mangina, like. <sighs> oh, Greg could have been a skinwalker. He might have been a skinwalker, but he was in Eng England? Yeah, we'll have to figure out the origin of old Greg. Yeah, I've got a lot of old Greg questions now. <laughs> yes. Where does he get all the Baileys? <laughs> uh, uh, he might maybe a skinwalker gone wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be just something else entirely. May hey, we'll just deal with old Greg in another episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> my biggest question when researching skinwalkers is, Okay, so they can shapeshift. They potentially had to do something horrible to do it, but why Why are they considered so bad? Otherwise, once they're a skinwalker. Once they are one, yeah. Right? So apparently, it's believed that they are usually responsible for anything from murders, animal attacks, and disappearances of tribesmen to even causing disease and illness, um, wow. destruction of property, um, even just little annoying things too. Like some of it almost seems playful. Oh. Like they're they're known for making sounds around your home, like knocking on windows, banging on walls. This could be in a new sense. Yeah, scraping on your roof, um, even peeping into your windows. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know they can be peeping toms. Um, they even I, most often, and a lot of I have read some local stories here where it's like they appear near a vehicle, like running alongside of it. At the same like speed as yeah. the vehicle, and then just like veer off into the woods, or just appear in front of your car and try to make you crash. <laughs> like they're just kind of causing all sorts of trouble, which to me sounds very much like a demon, right? Like you're yeah, just there absolutely. to just bother everybody yeah. and just make bad things happen. Yeah. So a lot of people think that they're just bad, just bad news. Um, so, what's their real deal? Like, what's their motivation? Well, apparently they kill out of greed, anger, envy, spite, or revenge. That might sound kind of familiar. Yeah, right. <laughs> kind of like the Seven Deadly Sins kind of stuff. Oh. Um, but they are blamed for all manner of unexpected struggle. Anything like poor crops or drought. Um, there's even one... I haven't read this commonly, but one source even said that potentially how they stay alive is through um the unexpired life from their victim so essentially if i kill you you had 20 more years ago i get those 20 years oh, <laughs> so they have to kill to stay alive well, that's ugh, i've never heard that yeah that is... i've only heard that from one source um most of the other sources actually this stuff is pretty benign just kind of like messing with your car bothering you mm. um and, like I said, some say that they are just pure evil. That sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just evil. Um, they're just evil. They just like to be assholes. And they're just evil and like to bother people. <laughs> um, so this kind of... I'm not going to go too into detail because I don't want to... I didn't want this to be like a big long history story. But there was the Navajo Witch Purge of 1878 where we're talking about those... U.S. influences. So in 1878, after a series of wars with the U.S. Army, the Navajo were expelled from their land and forced to march. I always mess up this word. Foskey, I think is how it's said. It's a local place here. Um, and what is known as the Long Walk of the Navajo in 1864. Yeah. Um, there the people suffered from bad water, failed crops, illness, death, and it reduced their numbers dramatically. Um, and then after four years of living in those conditions, the government finally admitted they had made a mistake kicking the Navajo off their land, and they allowed them to return um, into the Four Corners area. 
So when I say the Four Corners area, that's like where Utah, Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico all touch. It's that region. Mm. Um, so pretty much, all right, you're living in crappy conditions, a bunch of people get sick, die. Okay, now you can come back. <laughs> America's, you know, the U.S. government's like, oh, whoops, come on back. And then during these years, many of the tribes members were said to have turned to shape-shifting. So one notion is it was just such bad conditions that some people wanted to become skinwalkers to escape it. Oh, wow. Um, right? And thinking that they that really would be a good way. Skinwalkers to like, attack people that forced them off their land, essentially? Yeah, essentially like to get the U.S. government and like the people... Uh, kick them off their land, kind of get them back. Um, I mean, and this is just complete, like, disheartenment. It even says the rest of the tribes were convinced that their gods had deserted them. Like, completely just, you know, I, I can't imagine all of this going on at once to where it's, like, that desperation of being kicked off your land in this really bad situation. So it's almost like, did skinwalkers cause this or do we kind of just become one and fight this? Like I could totally see that conflict yeah. <laughs> going yeah. on with people. Um, okay. So once the people had returned to their homelands, their conditions improved, but the dreaded skinwalkers for whom they blamed for the years of the bleak reservation uh, were still among them. So this is where the accusations of witchcraft and the hunting of the skinwalkers began. Uh, um, when someone found a collection of witch artifacts wrapped in a copy of the Treaty of 1868, uh, <laughs> the tribal members unleashed deadly consequences. So the Navajo Witch Purge occurred in 1878, in which 40 Navajo suspected witches were killed in order to restore harmony and balance to the tribe. Oh, man. So that's, that's pretty creepy that it's the treaty. <laughs> of 1868 like with those artifacts um so yes so, i'm sorry rewind again so who is it that accused them and killed them was it the, the navajo tribe or americans that did that and the navajo, it was the tribe. navajo tribe so this okay. is after they've returned home ah, okay gotcha. things are getting better but I'm now like there's that. friction because they feel like the skinwalkers who caused this in the first place are still there so they pretty much went on a witch hunt, if you will. Yeah, exactly. They did kind of their own version of a witch hunt. Um, wow. But it, looked, it sounds like what really ignited it was the collection of witch artifacts wrapped in a copy of the Treaty of 1868. That was, that was the sign. And then the members of the tribe were like, nope, <laughs> we're purging you guys on wow. whoever. I don't know how they, I don't know any background as to how they suspected these 40 people, but... Wow. They took care of them with deadly force, if you will. Wow. Um, so yeah, so kind of back to what we were talking about earlier. I see. I don't know if any were false accusations. I mean, the assumption is that skinwalkers aren't real. So then, yes, essentially. <laughs> but I don't know. It's hard to say. But yes. you know, people died because of being accused of witchcraft. Essentially, just like you see all over the world. Yeah. And you still see, if you will, in other forms. Yes. <laughs> so, how to kill a skinwalker. Yeah, okay, this is important. This is almost impossible, but also makes me think of, like, Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> um, apparently, like, the only way to, and this isn't even kill, it's just to stop it. Okay. Stop a skinwalker is to learn their true identity and then to call them by their full name. <gasps> Oh, that sounds like an impossible thing to do. I mean, we can't even look him in the eye without them, you know, like, how do you know right. who he is? And it's more like the idea that if you do call them by their full name, the sense I was getting is that they essentially become kind of human again. Yeah. I like remember being, like, like kind of snap out of the spell of being all evil. Yeah. And then it's more like them trying to reconcile the horrible things they've done that kind of ends up taking care of them like mm -hmm. through legal stuff I, I mean i don't know what walls are like back then but essentially it's karma comes back to get get them once they uh snap out of it and karma always lands man yeah 
Oh man. So basically you just can't stop. Right. Stop. You really can't. It's like you just try to find their humanity a little bit. Leave the hell alone. But yeah, best just leave them alone. Uh huh. Um, what's interesting though is since, you know, these aren't really well documented or discussed at all, it's kind of like, well, when did they become so popular? Yeah, like how do we even know about them and almost is they're so hard to find information on. And this is going to be really fun in my next topic, which might be a two-parter. Um, so from what I could see is it seems like they kind of became well-known in 1996. Mm, um, this is when everyone, like, the non-tribal folks, if you will, kind of got a taste for skinwalkers. And this was from an article in the Desert um, News called Frequent Flyers. The story chronicles the Sherman family's experience in Utah on a farm. Um, and they experienced everything from UFO sightings, skinwalker encounters, disappearances, and cattle mutilations. Um, but where I'm going with this is the yeah. Sherman Farm, better known as Skinwalker Ranch. There is it the is. Hub of all of this stuff. So I will be discussing that in detail. Um, and I actually bought the book. Um, and there's actually a documentary in 2018 that came out um, on researchers that were. Um, kind of trying to figure out what the heck's going on at Skinwalker Ranch. And it's called The Hunt for the Skinwalker. Oh, um, so I have purchased that. That's going to be so good. <laughs> Skinwalker Ranch, like there's something there for sure. I mean, to have all of this happening there, I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. So I'm really excited that, excited that you're covering that. Like, I know like this much about Skinwalker Ranch, but it goes on and on. And, um, yeah, uh, some crazy research has been done there. So it's just like, what is it, you know, that yes. causes all this to happen there? It's it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And just kind of like a sneak peek. Um, like I barely got. In, I was like, yeah, I have no Skinwalker Ranch. No, I freaking don't know Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, it, it is nuts. It is now owned by a company called the Adamantium Corporation. Yeah which I think is super weird. I think it's spelled different, but adamantium is actually like what Wolverine's exo, well, his skeleton's made of. Like it's from like the comic books and it's like indestructible metal. Like uh, Captain America's shield is made of that. Uh, I think it's kind of weird that this company has a similar name to that. And it's also super private, super secure. We're talking armed guards, surveillance everywhere. I mean, um, there's some stranger things stuff happening out there, like for sure. It's weird. It is very it's weird. Very, very weird. Like there's, it's, they have, I feel like they have had to have found some kind of something and they're trying to keep people out. And yeah. But speaking of keeping people out, uh, one of our favorite people I think got to go in. <laughs> Zach Bagan, yes, right? The crew. That, I don't know if that episode is out yet, but I'm kind of want to watch it and see what it they is. found. I don't know when it was recorded or released. I, I want to say it might have been for Halloween or near Halloween this year. Um, Check it out. But yeah, I did see it. It was up on the. You watched channel. it. Yeah. Was it good? It was pretty weird. Like, it really tied into some of this stuff with some of the stuff they found in the caves. Like, wow. they did find, like, animal remains and, like, a recent fire. So it does sound like, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's one thing to sit in my chair and be like, yeah, people do evil rituals in caves out there. But to actually see that, like, holy shit, I think people really do. Uh, there was some weird stuff. There were, Those were some really good episodes. Because um, he also, I don't know if it was a two-parter, but... Like, there's at least two that take place in New Mexico, and I think one is on the Navajo Reservation, I want to say, oh, wow. where someone thinks their house is haunted, and they catch some weird shit that does seem skinwalker-ish. Wow. I mean, like, there's one point where it's like the night vision camera, or no, sorry, it's the, the heat detection, like, camera, and, like, you see a cold mass, like, just you walking out in the field. see that often. And it's moving really fast. Wow. But it looks humanoid. And it's, it, that was some of the creepier things. That was, that was definitely some good 
Good wow. research there, Zach. Well, I, you know, I'm glad that Zach's back out there. Like, I know he kind of took a hiatus there after Demon House and had oh, some, yeah. you know, a lot of physical stuff happen to him. So, I mean, as much as, you know, I, I'm just, I'm glad he's out there again, especially to um, be able to do Skinwalker Ranch. It's like, whoa, that's, <laughs> I don't even know where you would begin um, researching something quite that epic. Yeah. Right? So, so yeah. yeah, so I, I need to watch those episodes. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I highly recommend them. They're definitely some of the better ones where you're like, okay, there's actually something legit. Something to be there, yeah. <laughs> um, and then just to kind of sum up what's going on today, like around the the internet in 2018 ish, I would say there was like this viral image yes, going around. I remember um, seeing that image, but. Apparently it was debunked. It was actually from a 1980s sci-fi movie called Extra. Aww. Um, that was like the most recent quote-unquote sighting I've noticed of That's a bummer. Skinwalker, but it's not real. Um, but during my research, I also found a local artist here in New Mexico. His name is uh, Lawrence Hawkus. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and he is a Navajo folk art carver who specializes in the unusual. So oh, I have included a, a totem of a female skinwalker that he carved. And wow. unfortunately, it has been sold because I wanted to buy it. I know. But, I was like, um, I want it for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. So I'm definitely going to check him out. And if you're into. Do you have like a oh, gallery or something near you? or I saw it on like an art website. So I don't know. I'm going to try to check him That's out. That's pretty beautiful. I would love to get some of his pieces, especially yeah. um, if it's more of this unusual kind and of stuff. And it's kind of crazy. I mean, I would think it would be quite taboo for him to be making art with a skinwalker since yeah. that's something that, you know, people don't talk about. I, was, I know I was, um, when we originally revamped this, we kind of thought we would both do um, research on the same thing and we realized it would overlap and just not work so I just did very little little research on the skinwalker and it is when I tell you it is really hard to find information or sightings or people that have had experiences it's very difficult to research you did a great job Skinwalker is definitely terrifying because it's not just one scary thing like they they encompass everything and it's just I don't know like if you come in contact with a skinwalker i think you might yeah. be i mean like i said it's like a werewolf vampire demon combination a lot and they're also skilled in magic like nobody's business so it's like you're already dealing yeah. with I, I, I just don't know i mean the only thing i know to tell you is just be thrown and hide but they still probably get you <laughs> yeah just pretend you never heard this and don't speak of them <laughs> yeah i i think that's probably the way to go yeah well, I, I hope everybody enjoyed that episode, got a little creeped out, and maybe learned something. Yeah, definitely. I did. And, uh, yeah, what are you going to be talking about next episode? Do you have a topic? So, next episode, guys, we're talking about the Boo Hag, uh, which is indigenous to the low country of South Carolina, which is where I will be this week. And so, um, I mean, and it also kind of ties in very nicely to the Skinwalker. So um, this comes from the Gullah culture. So we'll be talking about the Gullah culture, which is a phenomenal culture of people that um, they're still very well and active in the low country um, of the state. So I'm really excited to talk to you about Gullah and to talk to you about the Boo Hag. Oh, yeah, that'll be a good one. Yeah, okay. I think so I pretty much only know the names. <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> great name. I've been calling my husband a boo hag ever since I started <laughs> researching it. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome name, but it's also a very, very terrifying entity. And I um I can't wait to share share with you what I've learned. And hopefully um I'm gonna hopefully go uh, see some sites to be able to provide you with some hopefully not footage of a real boo hag, but footage of, of the beautiful places where uh the boo hag legend takes place so i'm i'm excited to bring that to you i look episode. forward to uh listening instead of talking I know, <laughs> next I know. Episode. yeah well i've learned a lot so they're pretty terrifying <laughs> yeah yeah pretty spooky stuff out there um i look forward to learning more about the wow. 
And it's it's so crazy because it's like, you know, you hear about like skinwalkers or different things. Like when you really start, I really think it's so cool to not only study like the creature, but also study the culture that it comes from. Because I think that's yeah. a cool thing. Like we're just so fortunate here um, in the United States and even around the world to have such a diverse culture. And I really love, um, I'm really enjoying and learning a lot about the culture and the creature. So it's, it's really neat. So we, yeah. we're starting out with, um, so Adele is in New Mexico and I'm in South Carolina. So we're kind of starting out with creatures from our states. Um, but we can't wait to learn more about creatures from your state <laughs> and all, all around the world and uh, beyond. So we're really excited to see where uh, this podcast takes us. And I'm learning a lot and loving it already. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. And uh, tune in for the next episode on Boo Hacks. That should be a really fun Yeah, one. I'm really excited. And just so you know, if anything looks like a little suspicious, don't look at an eye, guys. Don't do don't it. Do it. Do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys stay safe. Stay safe out there, friend. Stay away from Skinwalker. <laughs> <laughs>